Hello everyone, today I wanted to talk a little bit about letters. You know, these things. The modern day Latin alphabet. 26 letters that act as the building blocks of communication. I say building blocks because they aren't inherently meaningful by themselves. English is all about how we combine these letters, and that's where things can get a little strange. U, the 21st letter of the modern Latin English alphabet, and the fifth vowel. You've probably come across U before, I mean it is the 13th most common letter. It makes the usual U uh sound, as well as an occasional U and U for some reason. But trip out on this. Have you ever seen a W? What sound does this make? W's exist in English, and you've probably seen it at some point. Probably the most routine instance of a W is in the word vacuum, which can mean empty or devoid of, and even like a, a household cleaning instrument. In this case, W seems to act as a diphthong, which is a very silly sounding word, defining a single sound made of two vowels. For example, the O and I in coin. You can see these vowels are in the same syllable. So we have two distinct syllables. Vacuum. And that's cool and all. Except for the fact that vacuum actually has three syllables. What's that about, hmm? Well, this is because the two U's actually make different sounds. You see, the word vacuum originates from the Latin word vacuous, vacuous, meaning empty or void. As you can see, the two U's make different sounds and have a syllable split between them, the same way the U's are pronounced in an English word like continuum. In linguistics, breaking a syllable between vowels is called a hiatus. Kind of like the, the A and I in this world is a good example. So in Latin, the word vacuous can be inflected, with the U-U-M suffix giving us the word vacuum, which is in fact the original pronunciation of vacuum. Vacuum. Basically, over time, English just evolved it into its own pronunciation. So in conclusion, yes, you've been pronouncing vacuum incorrectly. But so is everyone else. Essentially, whenever we see a double U in English, it's derived from a Latin suffix and should be pronounced as a hiatus. But of course, there are a few exceptions, just because the English is inconsistent like that and has words from different languages and whatever. But yeah, English will be English. You know what's also funny? W. Since we're talking about a double U, what about W? Or a double W? Does a double W make sense in English? What is a W anyways? Well, it's widely considered to be a consonant, but it's not entirely true. Take the word cum, for example. That's not a consonant. Essentially, the sound W is kind of a, another diphthong of vowels. When you sound it out slowly, that make the sound it makes, ua kind of sounds like u and a. Uh. Basically, the sound two u's make together. Well, what do you know? A w is a w, essentially the diphthong equivalent. Following the logic of these words, vacuum can be spelled like this. And about the double W idea, this is basically like having four U's next to each other. Which is weird. But it does happen. English has five distinct words containing a double W. But they always have a syllable split between them. Really only occurring when we have multiple words combined into one. You could kind of look at it as a hiatus of diphthongs. 
Now that just leaves us with the question of why W looks like a double V. In fact, take Q and X, every letter of the alphabet doubles up at some point in English. But what about all 676 possible letter pairs? How many are actually usable and actually all used? Well, I decided to find out. Right off the bat, we do know that some letters can be combined to make a new sound, but sometimes this only works at the beginning of a syllable and sometimes only at the end. Then some letters don't go together at all, but this doesn't mean it's impossible but they only work together when the two letters are in different syllables or one is just silent or something. So that's cool, but let's look at the numbers. Here we have a list of every word in the second edition Scrabble English Dictionary. It's not a perfect dictionary, but it'll do. Then with some quick code to read through all 127,142 words, we can count how many times every pair of letters occurs. So we can then organize it into a matrix of first letter versus the second letter. We can add some color coding and we end up with this data visualization. This tells us some interesting things. For example, out of all of English, IN and ES are the most frequent combinations. As expected, Q is always followed by a U, except for a few strange exceptions, and the diagonal here gives us the count of each repeated letter, like our good friends W and double W. L and N are the only constants that are followed by any letter, and we can also compile a list of every pair of letters that never occur in English. For example, no word has a JX in it. Cool. So, um, I guess, why? Why does any of this matter? Well, other than being an interesting dissection into English scribing, essentially what we've done here is developed a new set of building blocks. Building blocks specific to the English language. This is how a lot of text generators work. If we look at each data value as a probability, we can start with some letter, call it our seed, and randomly generate the next letter by looking at the weights of each possible letter that can follow. We then use that letter as our new seed and continue the process by also taking into account how frequently a character appears at the end of a word. We can also add spaces. Essentially what we have constructed is what's known in mathematics as a Markov chain. We are chaining together a bunch of instances based on a matrix of probabilities between them. Once we continue doing this, we will end up with text with the same two little distribution as English and therefore kind of mimics English. Kind of. We'll end up with a lot of made up words as you can see. But what's interesting is how these new made up words can still be pronounced in similar ways to how English words are. In fact, words like this sound a bit like how English would sound to a non-English speaker. But again, kind of. We can do better. Note that all we have done is built an order one Markov chain. We look at one letter and determine what the next letter should be. If we want an even better text generating algorithm, we can utilize an order two Markov chain sort of setup. That is, we can undergo the same procedure, but determine the, the next character based on the previous two characters. To accomplish this, let's first step back to our list of English words, read, read through all of them, but this time, instead of counting up pairs of letters, we count up all the trios, and bam, we have a new distribution. Yes, now we just do what we did before, but using a two-letter seed and determining the next based off of those. So now we end up with text with the same three-letter distribution in English. The more letters we use, the more accurate, randomly generated text will mimic the language we are using. It's as simple as that. So 
So if you want an extension of this, a Reddit user on the data on all slash data is beautiful. We made our prior visual with 17 more languages. Also, uh, another note, instead of getting made up words, you could make made up sentences by studying combinations of words instead of letters. But take caution, you cannot use a dictionary for this because you'll just end up with the alphabetical words following the seed. You know, you'd have to use pre-written text and it would mim mimic whatever that pre-written text is. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, so that's going to be about all for now, guys. I, I know this is a bit different, but I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video, which will hopefully be soon.